Yesterday, Rand's father, Ron Paul, finally gave the world his long-awaited take on law enforcement reaction to the bombing. In an op-ed for a libertarian website entitled, Liberty Was Also Attacked in Boston, Ron is a much more consistent libertarian than Rand, who is surely the slowest student of libertarianism in the Paul family. But Ron lies just as much as his son and just as blatantly and always has. The first word of Ron's op-ed piece is a lie. The first word. The first sentence is a lie. The first paragraph is a lie. Let's count the lies in Ron's first paragraph. Forced. Forced lockdown of a city. Now let's listen to the governor announcing the forced lockdown. We're asking people to shelter in place, in other words, to stay indoors with their doors locked and not to open the door for anyone other than a, a properly identified law enforcement officer. And that applies uh, here in Watertown, where we are right now, also Cambridge, Waltham, Newton, Belmont, and at this point, all of Boston. All of Boston. Did you get that? Forced? He said, we're asking people to shelter in place. That's what the governor said. He did not order anyone to do anything. Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick does what no governor in modern U.S. history has ever done. He orders nearly a million people to stay home. The greater Boston area shut down. Heavily armed officers in Watertown search for the suspect house to house. Residents trapped in their homes, but anxious to talk and communicate by phone, text, and the internet. All day long, we just kept looking at each other, my husband and I, saying, is this really happening? And we're watching the TV, and, um, and it just felt like we were inside this strange nightmare. Those inside their homes weren't allowed to leave, and those outside weren't allowed in. It's An super scary. Like, of all the places in Boston, I never thought that they would be right here. The dramatic scene played out in front of our cameras. Parents grabbing their children and running after spending the night hunkering in their houses and then finding themselves face to face with the muzzle of a SWAT officer's rifle. Now let's listen to the guy who stepped up to the microphone right after the governor, the Boston Police Commissioner. Mayor Menino has asked me to come here and to tell you that the shelter in place uh, recommendation has been extended throughout the city of Boston. The shelter in place recommendation. So forced is lie number one. Let's look at lie number two. Tanks. Okay? There were no tanks in Boston. Neighbors kept from getting inside their homes for the better part of an entire day. I'm certainly not happy about it. I wanted to sleep. After we were here earlier and we saw how, what, like, what was going on, we kind of figured it would be a while. Law enforcement teams feared the suspect may have littered explosives along the roadways. Those inside their homes weren't allowed to leave, and those outside weren't allowed in. There were no tanks in Boston. The Boston police don't have tanks. This is a tank. And this is the most fearsome vehicle that the Boston police used in the manhunt. It's about as scary as the armored trucks that move cash to and from your neighborhood bank. It is not a tank. Look at those tires on the police vehicle. Now look at the tires on a tank. See? No tires on a tank. Ron Paul knows the difference. He served honorably in our military. He knows the difference between a tank and an armored car, but for rhetorical effect, he prefers the lie to the truth on that one.
door-to-door -door armed searches without warrant. Police don't need warrants if property owners welcome, welcome them into their homes. Families thrown out of their homes at gunpoint to be searched without probable cause. No guns were pointed at any families. It's a little stressful. It was a little stressful seeing these guys uh, pointing big guns and you're holding your daughter in your arms, but um, they're, they're doing the right thing. You know, they're trying to secure the neighborhood. Each time the SWAT team would rescue a family at the point of a gun, they would rush into the home in an armored line, guns at the ready in case the suspect was hiding inside. And each time they cleared out a resident, they did it with a force that reflected the uncertainty of not knowing who was a friend and who was a foe. You know, he banged on the door. I looked up. I was shocked. And there was a gun or two guns or whatever pointing down at me and the guys. And they said, get out, get out. I said, OK. And I wanted to know, uh, you know, do I get my shoes? Or just get out, get out. OK, all right. The pattern was dramatically repeated time and again, house after house. Door-to-door -door armed searches without warrant. Police don't need warrants if property owners welcome, welcome them into their homes. Okay, so what you're saying is they gave you an absolute statement, we are coming in to look into your home. Exactly. And essentially this implies they did not give you a choice, correct? There was no choice. There was no choice no whatsoever, choice. right? There was no choice. I was opening my closet door to get out a coat and they screamed at me not to touch the door. And they screamed at you not to touch the door. So they and threatened I said, you. you guys are scaring me. I said, you're correct. really, really scaring correct. me. Uh, yeah, I live right across the street. Um, they just came in and searched my place. Um, Did they give you an option to... I asked them if I had an option, if I had a right, after I hit record on my phone. And he said, I always have a right. Um, yeah, and then they kind of pressed me, um, in the, thinking that if I didn't allow them that I was doing something wrong. Um, mm -hmm. But I did let them in. I have nothing Under duress. Under duress, exactly. Yeah. Families thrown out of their homes at gunpoint to be searched without probable cause. No guns were pointed at any families. Some families vacated their homes in Cambridge as police searched homes in that area, in the, sus in the area of the suspect's home. I was on the street in Cambridge then talking to the residents who were very glad to be out of their homes for the few hours it took the police to be sure that there were no more bombs in that area near the suspect's home, in or near the suspect's home. The street that the police was searching then was actually full of spectators and reporters watching the bomb search from what we hoped was a safe distance. None of the spectators on the street were following the recommendation to shelter in place and no police officer told them to go home because no police officer had the authority to tell anyone to go home because there was no forced lockdown. No businesses were forced to close. That is another Ron Paul lie. No businesses were forced to close. Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick does what no governor in modern U.S. history has ever done. He orders nearly a million people to stay home. The greater Boston area shut down. Heavily armed officers in Watertown search for the suspect, house to house. Adam, it really has been a terrifying scene over there. You know, Amanda and Kim, we know that there are anywhere from three to five different crime scenes here in Watertown, and a lot of these are residential neighborhoods. And you can imagine when these investigators are going house by house, if you weren't already inside by the time they started this search, you haven't been allowed back inside ever since. This was now 14, 15, 16 hours for some of these people. So. No businesses were forced to close. A wonderful little cafe was doing a busy lunch business on the corner of the street being searched for bombs in Cambridge. Transport shut down. Well, 
taxis were running most of the day, and you could always drive a car anywhere you wanted, but subways and buses were shut down. So I will give Ron Paul that one. So the first paragraph has six sentences and five lies. Ron Paul repeats variations on those lies throughout the piece. The shelter in place command, those are his words, that's what he calls it. There was no command. The paramilitary troops terrorizing the public. That, those are the words he used, terrorizing the public. Here is how the public reacted to being terrorized by their local police. Paramilitary police riding in tanks and pointing automatic weapons at innocent citizens. That's what Ron Paul wrote. What a vile lie. There were no tanks and there were no police pointing their weapons at innocent citizens. And you know who knows what a despicable lie that is? You know who knows how many police-hating lies Ron Paul told in his op-ed piece? Rand Paul. Rand Paul knows. When he was issuing his non-retraction retraction about supporting drone use in liquor store robberies, Rand Paul said this. Fighting terrorism and capturing terrorists must be done while preserving our constitutional protections. This was demonstrated last week in Boston. I'm sorry, libertarians, honest libertarians. You deserve better spokesmen than Ron and Rand. But until you get better libertarian act advocates, you're going to have to continue to endure paranoid, lying politicians in the Paul family. It's not about mobilizing people, it's about dialing for corporate dollars. These two parties have sold the U.S. government and the American people to the highest bidders. <laughs>